Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm Marcus from Insight Governance and we're a UK based cyber security company that specialises upon cyber essentials, ISME Cyber Assurance and ISME Cyber Baseline if you're registered outside the UK. Now if you're interested in obtaining any of these certifications then do please get in touch with us via our website. I'll put a link in there for the website below this video. So in today's video we're going to be talking about what is an asset register, how you go about creating one and what type of asset registers you need as best practice for your business. Now to get the best out of your business, you'll require two types of asset registers. One for all your physical devices, specifically devices that can store, process or transmit personal information and everything else that uh, has a cost to the business. And you'll also require an informational or a data asset register. This register is generally based around assets that are again process are used to process, transmit or store electro electronic data and which can be linked to your GDPR related data flows and mapping information. Now both these registers can be stored within the same workbook. So when it comes to your physical asset register, we're going to be concentrating on devices such as your PCs, your laptops, your servers, your printers, your mobile devices, any removable media that you might have. And this might even include wireless devices and so forth. Now, for completeness, you should also look at everything else that's within your business that has a cost allocated to the business. You know, for example, um, shredders, NAS devices, um, cars, things like that. So, how do we go about starting to create and populate an asset register for your business? As a good starting point, if you're going to be using Microsoft Azure Active Directory, things like that, you can just export that information and then you can import that into your spreadsheet and you can start from there. If you don't have mobile device management or Azure AD or any type of active directory services, you're going to have to go through, uh, manually have a look and review all the assets, record the information and then write it up in the spreadsheet. But you know, as long as you get all the assets into place, put them in the spreadsheet, you're good to go. So when it comes to creating an asset register, the easiest way to create one is simply by using Microsoft Excel, uh, Google Worksheets or some other type of spreadsheet product like that. Or you could buy some other product if you need it. Now there's no right or wrong way to answer when it comes to uh, what information you need uh, to log but the following ones that we're going to be talking about in this video are you know what should really be listed as best practice going forward. So you're going to need an asset number, this should be a unique number, you're going to need a serial number of the device or the of the asset, you're going to be looking for an asset owner so who is using or owns that asset. The status, so what's the status of the asset, is it in use or isn't it? What about the data assigned? Uh, the date assigned to the asset. What about the date returned if it's no longer in use? Uh, you should also be looking for a date of the asset was last checked, and you should also have a column. Ideally, you know, has the asset been patched? Does it have anti-malware software installed as well? Obviously, you don't need to have that, but it's good to have it. Then you should also have a, a, the name of the person who has checked the asset. You should also have a description of the asset. So, what is it? Was it used for? doesn't have to be one piece, but just something that's informative for it. Then you should also have a look at, you know, a column that says, what does the asset do? You know, does it have a specific function? Is it a domain controller? Is it a database or finance system or server? You should have a look at, uh, you should have a column that says, you know, what's the data on the asset? Is it personal information, market information, emails, databases, things like that? And you should also have a column that says, you know, how important is the asset to the business? For example, is it high, medium, low? If, you know, if something breaks. Ideally, you should have a classification column uh, for the asset. So, you know, is it confidential? Is it internal? Is it public use? And you should also have a location column as well. So, do you know where your asset is? Where is it stored? Is it at home? Is it in another office location somewhere? Is it on site? Is it in what department? And it's always nice though as well to have a column to say, you know, what's the asset cost? What's the value for that asset to the business? Then lastly, you should also have a look at, you know, maybe having a column that says notes, you know, have a notes field, putting your notes in there that you might need. And that's pretty much it for the physical asset register. It sounds a lot, but it doesn't take a lot uh, to get done. You can go through, put all that information in. A lot of it could be automated potentially. Now, when it comes to your informational asset register, this is all based around you know, similar sort of guidelines. You need to identify what informational uh, resources you have within the business and log them. So for this register, you could have uh, some of the following. Again, this is not set in stone or anything like that, and it can be adjusted for your business. But we're going to be looking at some of the following. So again, you're going to need an asset number. This should be nice and unique, so you can tie it all up. You know, what is the asset? Is it a paper-based asset? Is it electronic asset? Things like that. What does the asset do? Where's the asset located? You know, is it on-prem? Is it in the cloud? Is it in a department? Go from there. Again, we should have an asset owner or a team of people who are responsible for that asset. Should have a column to say, you know, does it process personal information? 
Uh, according to say, you know, who has access to it? Is it one person? Is it a group? Or is it a team of people? And we should have an informational classification column as well. So again, is it confidential? Is it public? Is it internal information? A column for saying, is it shared externally? How about a retention period as well? And we should also have a column to say, you know, when was the last time this information was all checked? And then finally, a notes column. So once you've had all your physical and informational asset registers created and populated, you can be confident that you know, you know, what assets you have within the business. You know, you know where they've been located, you know who they're allocated to, you know who's got access to them, and things like that. And this helps immensely if you're looking for going towards ISO 27001, or ISME Cyber Assurance, or even Cyber Essentials. Then you could also have a look at tying these assets up to your risk-based asset register as well. So they're linked together, so you know what risks they are against what assets they are. Now, I'll put a link in below um, this video, just in the description, of like a little example um, asset register so you can have a look at it build upon that and move forward and with that i hope this video has been informative for you i hope you like what you've seen please like this video and subscribe to the channel it helps us know you know people are watching it knows what's of interest for you and until next time i'll see you again